just for the taste of Roger, what are you doing here? Please, Eddie. I just came to see Jessica and to have a Diet Coke. He's a On June 22nd, 1988, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was released, garnering Disney its biggest opening weekend ever. A deluge of merchandise followed. Each book also comes with a mail-in certificate for this free Roger Rabbit. When you buy your video cassette of the smash hit Who Framed Roger Rabbit, McDonald's had super-sized collector cups for just 99 cents. Supersize makes in my place The good time, great taste of McDonald's Big fun! <laughs> If you threw a quarter in the machine outside your grocery store, you could get one of those trademark Roger Rabbit soccer keychains. Then you could put on your Roger Rabbit bolo tie and hit the ink and paint club. Hey, what is this place? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> and who are all those people? This is Heinz Hall, Roger. They all came here to hear the concert. Now, I've got some Roger Rabbit merchandise to show you, but first, we've got a very special guest. Hey, how you doing out there in Toontown? This is Gary K. Wolf, creator of Roger Rabbit, and I'm here today talking about my very favorite piece of Roger Rabbit merchandise. It starts back in 1988 when the movie premiered at Radio City Music Hall, uh, the next day, I went over to Macy's, which is just down the street, because I was told there was Roger Rabbit merchandise for sale there. So I walked in, I asked the young woman at the front desk in the information booth, I said, do you have any Roger Rabbit merchandise? She said, well, yes, we do. I said, where is it? She said, second floor. I said, where on the second floor? She said, second floor. So I get in the elevator, go up to the second floor, and the whole second floor, is full of Roger Rabbit merchandise. Nothing else but Roger Rabbit merchandise. So I'm walking the aisles looking at the Roger Rabbit merchandise and who should I bump into but Charlie Fleischer, the voice of Roger Rabbit, who was also checking out the Roger Rabbit merchandise. Now, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I picked up this, a Roger Rabbit doll that talks, and this is actually Charlie Fleischer's voice on this doll. Let's see if we can get him to say something. My name is Roger, but you call me Roger. <laughs> That's actually Charlie Fleischer. And I bought the doll in Macy's the day after the movie opened, and Charlie was standing there right with me. Charlie autographed the doll, drew a picture of Roger on the foot, autograph the doll and this is the first piece of Roger Rabbit merchandise that Charlie Fleischer autographed after he became officially Roger Rabbit. So this is my very very favorite piece of Roger Rabbit merchandise and I just love it to death. Thanks a lot for listening. What a treat it is to hear that story. Fantastic. Huge thanks to Gary K. Wolf for that. Hello! Where is everybody? Please, everybody, where are you? It's Roger Rabbit's first Christmas at Disneyland, and he can't wait to get into everything. That's me! He's the star of the craziest Christmas show ever. <laughs> my name in life, I'm the star of my own show, Makeup. People were asking the question, who framed Roger Rabbit? Was it his wife, Jessica? I like this. Roger Rabbit is guilty. This hat. I framed Roger Rabbit. This appears to be like a bootleg hat. It was Judge Doom. Didn't you guys see the movie? Remember me, Eddie? When I killed your brother, I talked just like I found this weird Roger Rabbit knockoff. I like the little bear in the corner just waiting for that high five. The rock and rolling rabbit. There he is on his trademark skateboard. I saved this since I was a kid. It is in pretty bad shape. This is the Roger Rabbit movie storybook and these were such a big deal because back then we didn't have the internet so you couldn't just look up pictures of your favorite movie. Unbeknownst to Eddie, Roger followed the detective to Maroon Cartoon Studio. He saw Eddie walk towards R.K. Maroon's office. Now the big omission from this is the only cartoons in this are Roger, Benny the Cab, and then the three weasels. Like this is the end scene where normally, you know, you got everybody. Ha, ha. I wonder who he really was. 
Mouse. Yeah, you don't have any Mickey Mouse. Hey, gee, uh, uh, better let him have it, Bugs. Okay, Doc. Plus, there's no Daffy Duck playing the piano. Not even Donald Duck. Look at this, the dip flip. They got the game mat you would have to cut out. This has not been cut out, thankfully. The dreaded dip means danger for all tunes. Just by touching it, they begin to vanish. Challenge your skill in different ways. You can help Eddie Valiant block the tunes before they disappear into the dip or be the sinister Judge Doom. Ooh, a game that lets you play as Judge Doom. There he is, flipping into the dip. Look at this. This has never, ever been used. So here's like all of the all of the stickers there still on the original sheet. Instructions right back there. And then you can see all the parts still tied up, still all uh, in the package. You would put those stickers on here. And then there's your dip. And I guess you'd, you'd flip them into the bucket. This would be where the Who Framed Roger Rabbit logo would be. Hopefully one day I get another one because I don't want to, I feel like at this point, this thing has stayed intact for so many years, I would feel like a heel if I opened it. I'd feel like Judge Doom putting that shoe into that, to the dip. Yeesh. I've got two video games. I've got the Who Framed Roger Rabbit for the NES. I don't know if you guys have ever played this one. Well, I got a Nintendo out there, so let's go play this. All right, I'm a bit conflicted about this game. It's a detective game. You play as Eddie Valiant. Roger Rabbit follows you around everywhere. Uh, it is interesting, but it takes so long to search for everything. It can be really, really tedious at points. You walk around the town, you go to buildings. So many of these buildings, they're just empty. You'll go up to people and ask, and he'll tell you, nope, this building's empty. And then you get to ride around in Benny the Cab, so that's a lot of fun. And you also get to go to all the different scenes from the movie. The end of the game is you beating up Judge Doom, which is awesome. Hi, you're new here. I'm Zach Morris. And I'm Roger Rabbit, so what? There is always a garbage pail kid. We've got Framed Francis and Dipped Dirk. Roger Rabbit, Roger Rabbit, Roger Rabbit, Roger Rabbit. What do you know, Roger? I know it's been in touching doors. I just stepped on a poodle. Hey, Eddie, Billy, you love to around. Now, let's say you want to wear a nice Roger Rabbit jacket as you go out. This one would be a good contender. Maybe you're from Canada and you want to go with a nice denim jacket. But if you want it acid washed, they've got that too. And then you could hang it up on your Roger Rabbit hanger. You need two more though. I also have this MS-DOS game, although it says IBM slash Tandy version of Hair Raising Havoc. And look at this, this is how many discs you needed to play this game back in the day. And this is very important. I'm gonna show you how this worked. This wheel, you only used once when you played this game. So first we have to go through the process of loading in each of the five diskettes. So now it asks me how many bananas does Roger have in his right pocket? All right, so we've got the right pocket here. Let's slide this over to a banana, all right. Right pocket has 23 bananas. All right. So the wheel was just a way to make sure that you wouldn't make a copy of this and give it to your friends. Mommy is going out for an hour, darling, but I'm leaving you with your favorite friend, Roger. The audio clips are interesting. The game is a fun side-scrolling platformer. There's a lot of things to interact with. It moves really slow, which I think is because the graphics were really impressive for the time, which makes the computer work a lot harder, which makes it kind of harder for it to move. We were living the dream, dancing the Roger Rabbit with Roger Rabbit. <laughs> I'll tell you, Roger Rabbit might be my second favorite Disney character of all time. My number one favorite is still Herbie the Love Bug. Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved Herbie the Love Bug. Uh, Herbie's a crazy story. You know, there is a screen used Herbie the Love Bug at the bottom of the ocean. I was amazed to find out about this. He's still down there. Hopefully one day we can raise Herbie up. Uh, I dug into that and all kinds of other weird trivia about that wonderful movie. I'm going to put that video right up here. Otherwise, YouTube says this is what is best for you. And I'll see you next time.